Hey everybody, welcome back to Football Talk with Vinny. In today's video, we're going over the Minnesota Vikings. So we're almost at the halfway point. Um, obviously this team is now the 14th team of the 32. I'm just going in order based on their draft. So let's get right into it. They did lose a couple of key free agents. Um, they lost their left tackle, Riley Reef. They lost the safety, Anthony Harris. And then they did lose a linebacker in Eric Wilson. Now, as for the players that they signed, they did get a couple of good players. Uh, older veteran corner and Patrick Peterson. Obviously, that was probably the biggest move. They had a couple small other ones. They, sh they signed Sheldon Richardson from the Cleveland Browns. They also got Xavier Woods, the former Cowboy safety. And then they traded for a center, Mason Cole from the Arizona Cardinals, who did play 80% of the snaps for Arizona. So obviously, they're expecting him to be the starting center. And lastly, they were able to re-sign Anthony Barr. So that was obviously a huge re-signing as well. Now, before I get into the draft, I'm gonna go over the money real quick. So they have 13.4 million to spend this year. Um, obviously, that's why they weren't able to really sign any big, big name free agents because they didn't really have the cap space to. And next year, um, they actually have 5.4 million. So they didn't have money to sign anybody like substantial because they knew next year their cap situation is even in a worse situation than it is this year. But with that being said, let's get right into the draft. Now, obviously, they actually traded down from the 14th pick. They traded with the New York Jets. And for the trade, they gave away the 14th pick in the draft and pick number 143, which was a fifth rounder. And in return, they obviously got the 23rd pick in the first round. And then they got two thirds, number 66 and number 86. So realistically, to move back nine or 10 spots and to pick up two third round picks in exchange for a fifth, I think it's kind of a win for the Minnesota Vikings, especially when you look at the player that they were able to take at 23. So they were able to take the left tackle, Christian Derrissaw at 23. I think realistically, if they stayed at 14, they probably would have taken him anyways because they definitely needed to address the offensive line, specifically left tackle for not signing Riley Reef. You know, so I think the fact that you're able to move back nine, 10 spots, pick up two third round picks and really get the guy you probably would have taken at 14. I think it's a win all the way around for the Minnesota Vikings. Now with their next pick, they actually didn't have a second. So their next pick was the pick they got from the Jets at 66. They actually took Kellen Mond, the quarterback. Now, obviously I think this shocked a lot of people, but when you look at it, it shouldn't be too shocking. You have a quarterback in Kirk Cousins who is 31, 32, might even be 33 now, maybe before the season starts. Um, so again, he's getting older. He's not gonna play for much longer. So if you can draft his replacement now in the second or third round, right? Maybe he sits for a year or two before he's ready to play. And now all of a sudden he's ready by the time that Kirk Cousins starts to show a decline. And now you can seamlessly just transition to a younger quarterback. So with their own pick they had in the third round, they took Chaz Surratt. He is a linebacker. Obviously, you know, you do want to address that spot. By letting Eric Wilson go, right, you did have a hole to fill there. And then with the other third round pick they got from the Jets, they shored up more of that offensive line by taking a guard. It was Watt Davis. So again, I really like those picks. And then really the last pick in that top 100, they picked at 90. They were able to get Patrick Jones, a defensive end. Um, now quickly, let me just go over the rest of the draft. They took Keeney and Wanu, a running back. I'll just spell that one at the bottom. Pick 125, Cameron Bynum a safety, pick 134, Janarius Robinson, a defensive end. At pick 157, they took Amir Smith marset a wide receiver. At pick 168, Zach Davidson, a tight end. And then at pick 199, Jalen Twainman, a defensive tackle. And the reason why I like to go over very quickly though, back into the draft is, you know, realistically, I like to focus in on those top 100 players, which is really the first three rounds. After that, the rest of the um, draft picks you take, they're really just hoping to make the roster and contribute on special teams. That's why I don't like to focus on them as much. So let's get back to those top 100 to kind of really look at those. So obviously with those top 100, you took two offensive linemen, a tackle, a guard, you took a quarterback of the future, and then you took a linebacker because you had a need there. So I really like what Minnesota did. Obviously, if you can address that offensive line with some of the guys you lost and bring in some younger, cheaper players, right, you're able to A, open up more holes for Davin Cook, but also give Kirk Cousins, you know, some time to throw the ball and obviously off of play actions, give time for those receivers to get open. I think the Minnesota Vikings are a very underrated team. I think they were very good last year, especially on the offensive side of the ball. Um, defensively, they made a couple of tweaks, right, signing Patrick Peterson. They were very young in the secondary, so maybe some of those guys get a little better. Obviously, Patrick Peterson maybe could take over one of those starting cornerback spots. So I do think the Minnesota Vikings are going to be sneaky good this year. I think 
No one, I think, would really be shocked if they made the playoffs because they were real close to it last year. Um, I think if I were to give them a range, I would say they're anywhere from like an eight to 11 win team. Obviously, I think Aaron Rodgers has a lot to do with that. If Aaron Rodgers doesn't play, I really think Minnesota is probably the best team in the division. If you just look at their overall roster, obviously Aaron Rodgers is so good. He puts them over the edge just because his talent is much better than any other quarterback in that division. But again, even if Rodgers does play for Green Bay, I do think that the Minnesota Vikings can challenge for one of those three wild card spots now. So thank you guys so much for watching. That's gonna do it for today's video. If you did like it, make sure to hit the like button and also subscribe as both of those do help the channel out. And I look forward to the next one. Bye.